Good morning and welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. Thank you for gathering with God's people for this time of renewal and refreshment and to hear together the call of Scripture to look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. More about that as we move into the Word today. A special welcome to those of you who are guests today. We're grateful that you have somehow heard the Spirit's call to gather with this community of faith, and we do pray this will be a time of refreshment and renewal. Special thanks to Kristen Pater, who's uh, back at the piano after um, after our first service scramble, which was outdoors. It's a beautiful morning to be in worship, but nothing ever quite worked very well. So um, 
We're going to make it easier for you. I hope we make it easier for you this time. But thanks for being here again, Kristen. Thanks for joining us by a live stream. We're grateful that you have chosen to become part of our community of faith. Today. And um, we invite you to participate in the Lord's Supper at that time in the service. So between now and then, if you gather to where you're worshiping bread or crackers, wine or grape juice, we would welcome you to eat and drink with us. Pastor Eric is on vacation uh, this morning, this week, so we pray God's blessing upon him for a time of refreshment and renewal as well. Please rise in body or spirit as we move into worship with our prayer of confession. Blessed be the Holy one God who looks upon us in compassion, who forgives our sin and heals our lives. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. Beloved people of God, hear the good news. As tender as parent the child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from the west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life today through Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God who crowns us with mercy and love, proclaiming the forgiveness of sins for you and to you in the name of Almighty God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God. The Lord be with you. Please pray with me the prayer for this day. O oh God, judge eternal you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a few minutes now to greet one another with God's peace this morning.
The author of Hebrews presents us with rich stories of faith. In a long list of biblical heroes, we find examples of trust in God that enabled them to face the trials of life faithfully. In addition to this cloud of witnesses, we have Jesus, the perfect model of faithful endurance. Our lesson for today is from Hebrews 11, 29 to 12, verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep, of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Word of God, word of life. It's black acclamation. Holy Gospel for today is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Sometimes Jesus speaks words that are incredibly comforting, and sometimes Jesus speaks words that are remarkably disturbing. You're going to hear the latter this morning. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 49. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you see there's, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of our Lord. And speak to God. You may be seated. Dearly beloved, grace and peace to you this day from God our Creator, from Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith and from the Holy Spirit. 
who blows life and hope and faith into us. The book of Hebrews speaks of faith more than any other book in the New Testament. I learned that this week. I didn't know that. In Hebrews 11 alone, the word faith is used 24 times. If you go back and read the whole thing, it says by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, and it goes through this long list. It's kind of the faith hall of fame, at least for the Hebrew scriptures. Lots of little story snippets of story after story. What you didn't hear in what starts off this marvelous chapter is this definition of faith, and it's worth remembering. I don't know if there's a better or more concise definition of faith in all of Scripture. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. The assurance of things hoped for, right? Faith, we hope in things we do not see or we're hoping for. The conviction of things we do not see. And then the author of Hebrew goes on to this long list of persons in the Hebrew Scriptures in the Old Testament who live by faith. And our lesson for today that uh, we heard that Adam read for us are dropped right towards the end of the parade. It starts at the beginning of Genesis, but now towards the end of the parade, we're dropped in at the tail end of all these slaves who have been led by faith out of Egypt through the Red Sea, now to the, through the wilderness towards the promised land. That's where we find ourselves. People who were led by Moses' faith that God was going to do something with them. And as you read even what Adam read for us today, you, you find out a couple things. One is that people, the people of God have done amazing things by faith. Some incredible things have happened by people who are acting on faith. Through faith, it says they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, shut the mouths of lions, won strength out of weakness, Women received their dead by resurrection, by faith. But that's only part of the story. People of faith also suffer a great deal. If you've been told or if you've heard or if you believe that faith guarantees success or comfort, that all will go well, then you've not heard the whole story. And it's right here in Hebrews in 11. We're also reminded that persons living by faith have suffered mocking and flogging, chains and imprisonment. Some were persecuted and tormented, living in caves and holes in the ground. People of faith are both winners and losers in the eyes of the world. Therefore, therefore, since we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, both winners and losers in the world's eye, who testify their witness is that God is trustworthy, Therefore, let us grab hold of the baton. We're in the parade, or maybe another metaphor is this relay race, and all these people have been passing the baton. Now it's our turn to grab hold of it and live by faith, to run the race of faith, remembering it's, not a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so all the more reason to set aside every weight, every burden, every sin that clings so tightly like cockle burrows on a sweater, let go of that and run with perseverance the race set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. It might seem obvious to say that people who call themselves Christians or who want to be Jesus followers would look to Jesus when running the race of faith. It seems like a no-brainer. Of course, that's what we do. Where else would we look? Well, all kinds of different directions, right? There's all kinds of different directions. Even people who live by faith can be swayed to look here and there and everywhere. One of my, I'm not sure I'm going to do this up here like I did outside, but one of my uh, favorite illustrations, some of you have heard it before, is of the grandfather who went outside with his children after a freshly fallen snow. And he said, we're going to play a game. I'm going to set a starting line and you're going to stand here and I'm going to go about 100 feet down here and I want to see which of you can run the straightest line. You decide how you're going to do it. And so he marks off, he shuffles the starting line in the snow, and the three grandkids are there. And he, he goes down here and, and he waits for them. So grandchild number one says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to look back at the starting line. 
And if I look back, I'm for sure that it'll be a, a straight line. So he's going back like this. And this is where I worry about the steps a little bit. You know, running this way and he's kind of not quite getting right and he gets there and he looks back and it's not really so very impressive, right? Because he's looking backwards. The next child, the next grandchild says, I know I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my feet. I'm going to keep my feet. I'm going to keep them as straight as I can one after another. And I'm sure that my, I'll be able to do this pretty well. One foot, and if I look at me, he gets there, looks back, you know, not so great. Their grandchild, what did, what did she do? Looked at the prize, right? Keep your eyes on the prize. Looked at her grandfather and headed straight toward him with his eyes on the prize. Look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Not backwards, what happened yesterday, not even at ourselves. Now, we, we do that instinctually, right? When our kids are uh, starting to walk, how far do they get? Not very far, but what happens? You hold out your arms, they're about this far away, and they step towards you, right? That first step, and you immediately call grandma and grandpa, and everyone, oh, they're walking, she's walking, so great. It is, it's a marvelous thing. And then after they get a little cocky, then they start looking around. Now, um, I said I didn't say who this was. My second son who actually, had, so I, I threw him under the bus second for service. But Samuel, and Ben did this too, but Samuel especially, after he learned to walk and then run a little bit, he would, he would be looking at us as he was running. And we would just come, we would close our eyes for waiting to see what, what he's going to hit. Well, he's still alive to tell the tale today. Um, but that's not how you do it, right? To get where you're going is straight. Look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, is what Hebrews says. Jesus is the initiator. Jesus is the encourager. And Jesus is the finish line. And when we stop looking to Jesus... We can lose our way or forget why we're running the race in the first place. I mean, what, what is this all about? More than a decade ago, a Reformed theologian by the name of Michael Horton wrote a book called Christless Christianity, the American Captivity of the Church. And the argument in his book is that the church can easily acknowledge Jesus. He's a very interesting guy who lived a couple thousand years ago. He's got some good ideas about how to live your life, you know, kind of a life coach. But at the same time, we lose sight of Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And he says, we get in trouble when we focus the conversation on us, us as individuals, looking at our feet, or even us as the church. Now, some of the things that distract us are good things. They're not bad things. They're just not primary. He says, focusing the faith on us it makes us feel like our desires, our needs, our feelings, our experiences, our activities, our aspirations make us feel relevant, make us feel like maybe more people will be interested if we're talking about those things first. Horton writes, I think that the church in America today is so obsessed with being practical and relevant and helpful and influential and successful and well-liked that it nearly looks like the culture itself. Do more, try harder, Keep busy is the pervasive message across the theological spectrum. It's not conservative. It's not liberal. It's all really everywhere. Do more. Try harder. Keep busy. That's not, that's not what Jesus tells us. Looking to Jesus, the Jesus of the Gospels, will lead us into running a different kind of race than that one. And no doubt, you know, one of the problems with following Jesus is that Jesus is really hard to pin down. If we were to go around the room today, I said, tell me who, who is Jesus? Jeff, who is Jesus? Mark, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? We would have a lot of different answers because Jesus is really difficult to pin down. So Jesus is the person who gathers children to himself. Any of you, this is going back a few years now, any of you have in your Sunday school classrooms a picture of Jesus with the lamb over his shoulders? Jesus is the good shepherd, right? Jesus is kind and gentle. And then there's the Jesus who shows mercy to sick people, who heals the sick and welcomes sinners and gets in all kinds of trouble for that. There's Jesus who tells these great stories 
about the son who demanded his inheritance, about the guy who was robbed and beaten and these three people walked by. There's Jesus who says the kinds of disturbing things we heard in today's gospel, which we're going, what, what is he talking about? This, I don't really know this Jesus who's trying to stir up trouble. And there's Jesus who announces the coming of the reign of God in himself, causing religious and political leaders to try to put an end to what he's about. They try. They tried. When we look to Jesus, we cannot help but see the cross. And if someone introduces you to a Jesus where the cross is nowhere to be seen, then that's not really Jesus. It might be partly Jesus, but it's not... you. you you can't look to Jesus without seeing the cross somewhere. If you meet a Jesus who guarantees you happiness and success, it's not really the Jesus of the cross. It's not. A Jesus who is a little more than a life coach, whose whole mission is to make, help you make your life work. That's not really completely Jesus. If you meet a Jesus who is only concerned about individual morality, or only concerned about social justice, if those are the only things that Jesus is concerned about, the one that you've met, then that's not really Jesus either. Because the cross would be unnecessary in all of those profiles. Look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy set before him, endured the cross. It's remarkable that joy and the cross can be in the same sentence. We'll talk more about that in a couple of weeks. Francis Spufford, who writes in, his, writes in his book, Unapologetic, about Jesus revealed on the cross, that Jesus' heart is revealed on the cross. Last night, I was at the emergency room, and I, we're going to pray for this family. Um, many of you know Arlene and Dan Drew. Their daughter, Carrie, was involved in an accident. She was killed yesterday in a motorcycle pickup truck accident. Pickup truck ran over the top of the motorcycle that uh, Mark and Carrie, Mark is injured, Carrie died, Arlene and Dan's daughter. And um, going to the emergency room, and you have all been in this or places, you have been in broken places, and you know in those places that the do more, the try harder, the keep busy, that's not a word that doesn't do anything. It's got, it's nothing, there's nothing, I got nothing. We got nothing in the R except we have, we have a Lord who promises to be there in the midst of that crap. We know that because of the cross and promises that nothing will separate us from that love. That's what we got. Francis Spufford talks about this Jesus in his book, Unapologetic. He says, on the cross, the doors of Jesus' heart are wedged wide open and in rushes the whole pestilential flood, the vile and roiling tide of cruelties and failures and secrets. Jesus says, let me take that all from you. Give that all, that stuff to me instead. Let me carry it. Let me be the blame. I am big enough. I am wide enough. I am not what you were told. I am not your judge or your king. I am the father who longs for every one of his lost children. I am the friend who will never leave you. I am the light that's behind the darkness. I am the shining your shame can never extinguish. I am the ghost of love in the torture chamber. I am change and hope. I am refining fire. I am the door where you are absolutely convinced there was only a wall. I am gift without cost. Before the foundations of the world, I am. I am for you. So do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Far more can be mended and transformed and made new than you can even imagine. So look to Jesus, church, above all things. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith, the initiator and the encourager and the finish line. Set aside the burdens and distractions you carry. And in fact, Jesus will even help you do that because we can't get rid of it all ourselves. Run to him. Run with him. 
run for him and know that you are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses who is cheering you on and who welcome will welcome you home. Amen. Let's stand, rise in body or spirit. Let's sing, Give Me Jesus together. Let us affirm our faith together now in the God who comes to us in Jesus the Christ. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed again this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the community. As I mentioned in the sermon uh, this morning, we certainly pray now. Uh, for Dan and Arlene and their families. Please uh, keep them in your prayers. Those of you who know them, their longtime partners here at Spirit of Joy might reach out to them with a word of kindness. Um, Mark was in the ER last night. Carrie's husband, I think he may be going home today. He was not as obviously as severely injured. Also, we give thanks for uh, successful and safe surgery from Marvel Eldol. Marvel, if you're watching, we're grateful for your healing. And... Uh, 
the Whitrock family has asked us to keep a couple of their friends in prayer. Um, Renee is a mother of a friend of Shelly, and then uh, a young woman who is, I think, in her teens as, is at Mayo and um, struggling with some serious health issues. So we keep Alexis, who's her name, in prayers along with others. Let's sing in prayer. Hope of all creation Lift our prayer to you We lift our prayer to you Trusting in God's extraordinary love we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you have given us your word like a fire. Kindle its flame within and among us. Empower us for the work of breaking down walls, reconciling the divide, and building faith. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our prayer to you. O oh God, you formed the furthest reaches of the universe, yet your spirit dwells within each life. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our prayer to you. O oh God, we pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend vulnerable people and stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Inspire us all to share food, land, knowledge, and our arts for the common good. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our prayer to you. O oh God, we pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, ableist discrimination, and all people discriminated against based on their gender identity or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our prayer to you. Oh God, we pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. Pour out your healing power on all who need it, especially for Joan, Jean, Roger, Mike, Felicia, Marvel, Sheila, Peter, Amy, Camden, Renee, Alexis, and others we name in our hearts and with our voices. In our joy and in our tears, be near to us. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our prayer to you. O oh Lord, bless and comfort all parents and children who are beginning new chapters in their lives with the beginning of another school year. For our kids dropped off at colleges and universities and parents returning home. And for our kids going to school for the first time and for the parents anxious about these first days, assure them of your constant care. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our prayer to you. Merciful Lord, Give comfort to Arlene and Dan Drew and family as they grieve the sudden death of their daughter, Carrie. Pour out your healing power on Mark. Reveal your compassionate presence and help them to trust that nothing can separate us from your love. We lift our prayers to you. We lift our prayers to you. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. We lift these prayers to you. Amen. Hope of all creation, healer of relations, we lift our prayer to you. We lift our prayer to you. We continue our worship now by sharing tithes and offerings. 
Thank you for the gifts that you give, which makes possible, which make possible the ministry of this congregation in this place and be outside these walls, really around the world. So thank you for that. You can give this morning to a couple of baskets, uh, and there's a couple of baskets we will pass here, and also you can always give through our app or uh, online giving, or if you're interested in signing up for regular uh, giving, automatic giving, we can help you with that too. Just contact Heather during the week. So let's do that now. And kids, if you have an offering, we'll put the hand up front. And the Eisenbites. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We only got two baskets. We'll have to make. We'll have to stretch this morning. We'll have to pass. Please join me in our offering prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Prepare now to come to the Lord's table. One of the ways we look to Jesus is look to the table where he says he is present, promises to meet us. All of you this morning, whether you're a partner of this congregation or you're a guest today, you are welcome to come and receive Jesus in bread and wine. We have a gluten-free bread. If you prefer that, please ask your servers. And our trays of cups have both red wine and white grape juice. You may choose either when you come. We'll have two stations. We'll have everybody kind of move to the center aisle from the outside, come through the chairs and eat and drink here, and then return to the outside seats. Please rise and body your spirit as we prepare to eat and drink. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his followers and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and this is poured out for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of all sin. Drink this in remembrance of me. Gathered in this space by God's Spirit, we pray now as Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Servants, please come forward. We will prepare to eat and drink. Come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the sin.
May the holy and precious body and blood of Jesus who was crucified and raised for us, may this strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and every day. Amen. A few brief announcements. There are, again, several in the bulletin. Uh, please note those as uh, they are printed. One additional one that hasn't shown up yet is that a couple months ago, there was a group, we had a couple of gatherings for persons who are 60 plus to ponder and visit with, talk with one another about the purpose, the joy, the challenges of growing older. Now we're all grow older, but um, things are sometimes a little bit different when you get 60 plus. So we're going to have another gathering on Thursday, August 25th, again in the morning. Our guest speaker will be Pastor Randy Fredrickson, who's chaplain at Trailbridge. He'll talk about his ministry, what he's learned. Uh, I've known Randy since, we, since I was in internship, so our connection goes back a long time. Uh, very engaging and a wonderful guy. So if you're interested in joining us, love to have you um, sign up just so we have an idea of how many, um, how much coffee to make for that gathering. We're serving with Laundry and Love, along with Love on Tuesday the 23rd. So a week from Tuesday, please sign up if you can help us with that. There's a couple of uh, faith formation happening, Bowen family with Pastor Paul again on Wednesday night. And the Faith and Film Group is going to talk, uh, discuss CODA. We chose that when we were sure that it would be out on DVD for everybody to see. It was the Academy Award winner. And it's still only on Apple Plus. So you can sign up and then cancel after you've watched the movie. That is an option uh, if you want to go through that. But we'd love to have you join us for that. Uh, we're still looking for some drivers for preschool. If you can help, even a couple times a month. Don't feel like if you sign up, that means you've got to do every Tuesday until May. Uh, we're looking to put together a team of people who can help us with that. So grateful that we have this additional ministry as part of our preschool. Don't forget, next Sunday, we will install Deacon Hannah uh, into our ministry, Pastor Renee Splickle-Larson uh, from the Senate office. She will be here to preach and install Hannah. And then two weeks from today will be my last Sunday with you. I'd love to worship with you. And then in the evening, uh, we're going to eat together. So if you can join us for that, um, for the Last Supper, I guess, of some kind. Anyway. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's not the Last Supper. That sounds too, I don't know, too grandiose or something like that. We're going to eat. Two weeks from tonight, we're going to eat. If you want to come and join us, that'd be great. All right. Enough already. Rise and body your spirit. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing one more time. Lead on, O King, eternal.